Hello, classmates and Professor Gardner. Good to see you guys again. Uh, this is Rick Hodge again, coming to you from my recording studio this week, slash guest bedroom at the Hodge House. And what I decided to go with for my case study this week was Vanderbilt University versus DiNardo. And the reason I like this case and chose this case, because you see this all the time in college sports, even professional sports, where coaches either get fired before their contract is up or they leave for a different coaching position before their contract is up. And you always wonder kind of how does that settle the logistics of it, the, the law of it. And that's kind of what happened in this case. Vanderbilt University hired Jerry DiNardo to be their head football coach in 1990. And they hired him to a five-year contract. And with that, and the reason they wanted that five-year contract is they told Coach DiNardo when they hired him, we need stability in our football program. And we need that, so we're hiring you and we're going to hold you accountable to stay during that time. And basically, they had it in the contract that if Vandy terminates him as coach, then VU would still pay him the remainder of the contract. And with that, if DiNardo leaves before the five years are up to go to another school, then he owes them for those years. Well, what happened was after three years as the head coach of Vanderbilt, that's when they came to him and talked to him about a contract extension. And he was given a two-year deal. Where it got kind of difficult was he signed the extension in the athletic director's car uh, at the practice field. And once that happened, Coach DiNardo uh, was only given the paper to sign and not the entire contract. And so when he asked them, where's the rest of the contract, um, the athletic director, um, Paul Houlihan, told him, well, the contract's the whole same. The whole contract is the same as the original contract you signed. It's just an extension, two-year deal. That's all that took place. Um, so Coach DiNardo was only given that paper. He agreed to sign it, but when he signed it, he wanted the whole contract to be given to his brother, who was also his lawyer, um, and he wanted that done, and that was Larry DiNardo. And he said, you need to give the entire contract. He signed it, but said, you need to give the entire contract to my brother, who is also my lawyer, um, and have him look through it, go through it with a fine tooth comb and make sure everything's fine. Um, but he was never really sent the copy in DiNardo's mind. He was never sent that copy. Once that for fourth season, he then coached the fourth season for Vanderbilt. Once that fourth season was over and completed, LSU called. And so Louisiana State offered him the job and DiNardo took it. Um, once that happened, um, so, so DiNardo resigns as Vandy head football coach. He goes to LSU. Vanderbilt claims breach of contract. Um, the district court uh, entered the uh, summary judgment for Vanderbilt. And, and they basically said that you owe them $281,886. Um, and that was when Vanderbilt sent a demand letter to Nardo seeking payment for three years. And they wanted three years of the deal. One year for the original contract, it was signed. Plus, they wanted the two-year contract uh, extension as well. And that's when they claimed breach of contract by Coach DiNardo and won their money. Um, arguments for both sides. There are definitely arguments to both sides. First of all, DiNardo claims that his attorney never got the extension looked at. And he was still going through it. His attorney was still going through it because he's saying Vanderbilt never sent him that copy. DiNardo says he doesn't have to pay back the two-year extension. That wasn't part of the deal. Part of the deal for breach of contract was that five-year commitment. Um, and Vanderbilt was saying, no, you still owe us for the two-year extension also. And so that's where when it went to court, that was with some of the things that they had to discuss uh, and go over. Um, that's what we call liquidated damages. And liquidated damages uh, refers to contracting parties agreement uh, on payment if the contract is not completed. Um, this contract was not fulfilled, uh, but was there, was there a legal extension agreed? And that's kind of what they're arguing about in court. Was that a legal extension um, that took place. Donato also claims there was no liquidating damages because there would be a replacement coach. It's not like they couldn't find anybody. Um, that there would be a coach hired to take my spot so you can't claim liquidated 
damages. Um, this theory was dismissed by Vanderbilt because they said initially, and it was even in the in the original contract, it was important to them to have a long term commitment by a coach. Their football program needed stability, and that's why it was all that stuff was written into the original contract. And so that's why Vanderbilt dismissed that in court, and they said that won't take place. Uh, therefore. Um, you know, Donardo resulted in Vandy suffering damages beyond hiring a replacement uh, because they had different uh, people there that they wanted to hire and Vanderbilt had to go through the whole process over again. Donardo contends uh, there's no evidence that the parties agreed on damages beyond the cost of having a replacement. Um, basically, Vanderbilt wanted to fine him more money than what was in the original contract because according to Vanderbilt, uh, Vanderbilt countered that the discussion was made about the stability of the program and it talked about re um, recruiting players, retaining assistant coaches. Um, Vanderbilt asked for expenses of $27,000 to recruit. The cost uh, to recruit a new coach, $86,840 for moving and moving a new coaching staff in, uh, as well as $184,311 for compensating the coaching staffs as well. So Vanderbilt started throwing all of this in to the, to the deal as well. And Donardo said, that's not true. We never talked about any of that other than just the simple basics of the contract. Um, if this were to get broken, um, then that's where the legal issue kind of came into place. Donardo claimed Vandy um, by Vanderbilt granting LSU permission to speak to the him uh, means that waived their right for that that penalty. Um, you're the ones that allowed them to speak to me, so therefore I don't owe that penalty. Vanderbilt said, "No, it doesn't work that way." Um, we claim they claim that's not true. They granted permission for LSU to speak to you, but we didn't claim um, for you to breach a contract. Uh, that's different. Plus, anytime another college call saying, hey, we want to talk to your coach. Vanderbilt claims that's just professional courtesy. The team always, always allows that school to talk to their coach. Now, they might go back in and talk to the coach and try and recruit him to stay or remind him about the breach of contract, all of that type of stuff. But just because we gave them permission to speak to you doesn't mean we gave you permission to breach the contract. Um, Donardo claims the the addendum, which is the extension, was not a binding contract because his lawyer never approved the terms. He never received those terms that you had me sign in a car uh, at the practice facility. He's saying he never received them. He's also saying um, when he did receive them, it was never signed. Um, so they gave him a blank copy, a copy of the contract. They gave the lawyer, um, a, which is Larry, a copy of the contract, but it wasn't the signed copy. And so his lawyer doesn't think it was ever, didn't know it was ever signed. Uh, the court's rule, the addendum um, was enforceable by law because both parties acted as though the contract was extended and the lawyer did not object. So even though he received a copy, he didn't reject the copy or, or want to make any changes to the contract. All right. And it was signed. It was signed by Donardo in that parking lot. So they kind of held him to that. Court findings. Uh, how did the court rule on this? The district court found that there was liquidated damages and the extension was enforceable and found judgment for Vanderbilt. The judgment was for Vanderbilt for two hundred eighty one thousand eight hundred sixty six dollars and forty three cents. Liquidated damages was um, reasonable given the nature of the unquantifiable damages in the case. Uh, Donardo then um, appealed the ruling um, and it went to appeals court. The federal appeals court then threw out the findings of the district court. The appeals court also, um, they also took the case uh, a different direction and went back to district court on the legality of the extension and both sides went back and forth. Both sides eventually agreed on Donardo paying some money. Uh, didn't pay. I don't think either side really won the case. I think Donardo still had to pay, but I don't think he paid as much as Vanderbilt wanted. Um, and then he had to give some of the money up 
as well. Okay. Um, what can we learn from this case as athletic directors? Well, the obvious thing that we need to learn, which is how to properly and professionally handle contract negotiations. You shouldn't be doing that in a parking lot. I know this was back in early 1990s, and that's how a lot of these things were done back then. Um, it was a handshake agreement between a coach and an AD, and that just doesn't hold up in court anymore. And so if you're going to be do working with contracts, contract extensions, it needs to be done in a professional manner, and it needs to be done in a room, in an office, with the coach and AD sitting down and lawyers in that meeting with them and the entire contract should be there. And that way all questions are answered, everything is done correctly and coach and lawyers can be in one room and have the whole thing there and everything needs to be done in a professional manner as opposed to this handshake agreement, the way things were done back then. Uh, and that's kind of what got both of these guys in trouble uh, and, and why it went to court and handled all of those. Okay. Uh, very good case. I, I, once again, I recommend you um, reading through that, seeing it because uh, it, it is so similar to what we see all the time uh, in college sports, coaches leaving early, coaches getting fired early. How do you compensate and how do you handle all of that? So uh, enjoyed it. It was a good, it was a, it was a um, interesting read for me as a coach um, try, you know, looking at becoming an AD. So I see both sides of the situation. So that's what I, uh, reported on this week and what my presentation is about. And I will see you guys next week with my next week, uh, presentation. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.